Um, hey, so we have the pleasure of introducing our amazing Beverly Hills Mayor, Lily Bosti. And before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge uh, a couple people in the room. We have our amazing board member, Mary Wells. Uh, she serves on the Beverly Hills School Board. She is truly incredible. You have to, I really implore you guys to watch some of the board meetings and learn a little bit more about what goes into your school and the kind of government and how decisions are made. And another is our student board member, Woo! Alex Odin. Beverly Hills Mayor Lily Bossy is currently serving her third mayoral term. She's a graduate of USC and Beverly Hills High and Beverly Vista Middle School. Mayor Bossy was inducted in the Beverly Hills High High School Form of Hall of Fame and served as past president of the Beverly Hills Education Foundation, securing the largest donation of $1 million naming opportunity for the nickel field at the high school. Mayor Bossy has funded the John and Lily Bossy Family Library and KBEV at Beverly Hills High School as a result of her love for Beverly Hills students. In 2022, Mayor Bossy launched her mayor's mental wellness series which features mental health experts who share their experiences with the community. In February, Mayor Bossy was featured on her Beverly Hills High School Norman A. podcast discussing the importance of allyship. Mayor Bossy has also worked close with the city's teen advisory committee consisting of 6th through 12th graders who live in the city or go to Beverly Hills schools who are interested in learning leadership skills, identifying problems teens are facing, and suggest solutions. The Teen Advisory Committee launched a Mayor's Youth Council subcommittee to work on programs that align with the Mayor's initiatives. Additionally, community initiatives Mayor Bossy has led include her Live with Lily series, a monthly open forum for members of the community to share their ideas. She has also developed her Business with Bossy program, in which she visits local businesses along with the community, and a 60-second shout-out to highlight businesses at City Council meetings. Mary Bossi is the daughter of a Holocaust survivor and has spoken out about anti-Semitism around the globe, most recently at the Anti-Semitism Summit at Athens, Greece. She has been leading voice for condemning anti-Semitic behaviors and hate of all kind, speaking on numerous occasions to local and national news outlets about the anti-Semitic flyers distributed in Beverly Hills and nearby cities and the defacing of the Nora in the city. And around December 2022, she was also a guest speaker on the Dr. Phil show discussing anti-Semitism and the damage it does to our society. She has been awarded the 2023 Woman of the Year Sam Shi Hekman Award by the Iranian Jewish Women's Organization and will be honored as the recipient of the Beth Jacob Synagogue's First Distinguished Leadership Award in March 2023. And now we'd like to welcome our Mayor, Lily Bossi. Thank you. both of you for this incredible introduction. I'm not going to stand behind a podium. I'm just going to be here with you. First of all, it is so exciting for me to be here. Uh, this is where it all began for me. And I literally took language in this classroom. Wow. So, wow, I know. It's pretty like, crazy to even imagine that. So it was random, but I don't think anything's random, actually. That here I am in the exact classroom where I actually took Hebrew. And uh, for me, all roads lead back to the Beverly Hills School for me. All roads. Uh, you know, growing up here, uh, you know, my parents initially, uh, my first few years of life, I lived in New York City. And my parents chose Beverly Hills to live in because they had thought of police, fire, and schools. And they wanted their, you know, my parents were immigrants, and they wanted to provide for me, their daughter, the best of everything. And they felt that to come to California, to come to Beverly, uh, Beverly Hills would be an opportunity. So I grew up initially on South Rexford Drive, and then ultimately, um, on South Maple Drive, right around the corner from Beverly Vista. At that time, Beverly Vista was you know, not a middle school at the time, so it was an elementary school. And 
what I want to tell you is the person that I am standing here today grew into being who I am today. When I was in elementary school and when I was in high school, I was very, very social. I loved community, but I was not the kind of person that when the teacher would ask for a volunteer, I would not be the first person to raise my hand. In fact, I was actually one of the people that would say, please don't pick me, please don't pick me. So I grew into that. I grew into my voice. I grew into my confidence. Uh, so I, for any of you here who might not be someone who is the first person to raise your hand, just know that doesn't mean that later on in life you might be that. Because if I look back to the Lily that I was back then, I would never have imagined that part of myself to have grown into. But what I do know is that I loved our community. I loved my community that I made here in the schools, like the friendships. The One of my close friends was my maid of honor when I got married. This is friends from you know, our schools. Another close, actually a few of my uh, Bridesmaids were fellow Beverly friends that I still am friends with. So a lot of lifelong friends I kept through through the years. But what I loved about our community and what I loved about our schools and what I loved about our community was that sense of neighborhood closeness and that sense of family and extended family. And for me, I think it was something I was always longing for. As I was an only child, I always was longing for an extended family. So I created that here when I went to Beverly. I mean, it's it's funny. I spent a lot of time at the library, and during like nutrition and during lunch, I would always say, "Okay, everybody, let's meet in front of the library," and then we would be together. So I think parts of my personality stayed, which was the sense of connecting, the sense of wanting to bring people together, and being very open-hearted and inclusive. Uh, so for me, you know, my journey was, I think because I've always been a people person, I've always been interested in psychology. I've always wanted to know why people think the way they do, wanted to be somebody that really liked to connect. By nature, I'm never judgmental. I'm always, like, I feel like we, we all have our journey. So for me, that was my interest. I went you know, towards uh, psychology when I was in SC, and I always felt that having that, first of all, that was my nature, but I also felt really being open to others and learning from others was a great skill to have in anything you do. So I did that, and I, I worked at UCLA Hospital um, in the inpatient unit where I was doing a depression scale, so when people were getting admitted, I would be the intern that would kind of evaluate how people were feeling. Uh, and then ultimately, uh, when I got married, we, my husband and I uh, initially had, had our first son, who uh, went to our Beverly Hills schools pretty quickly, and then I kind of shifted gears and became very involved in our schools. You know, very involved as I'm sure many of your moms or dads are family in terms of PTA and such. So I think my, my love of the schools continued and I became very involved in the PTA, whether it was Beverly Vista or El Rodeo or the high school. And then ultimately uh, uh, BHEF, and as was mentioned earlier, if you go to Nickel Field, um, it's named Nickel Field because of uh, a wonderful, generous donor who had donated at that time a million dollars, which at that time and still at this time is a lot of money to donate. And it was because his kids had gone to the schools and he felt that he wanted to continue that forward. So as I was involved with the PTAs and such, I realized that my love for the schools and my love for the city really you know, interconnected. And one of the things that I had done was uh, something called Walk for the Schools. And I think that was my first feeling that we really need to have a very strong connection with our city and our schools. 
And so what I arranged was for all the parents, all the students to walk through our city and have the different businesses support us. And that was the beginning of my connection to trying to bring the schools and the city together. So while I was involved with BHEF, I also at that time chose to uh, go on a commission at the city. And I went on the Traffic and Parking Commission. And at that time, I was probably the youngest commissioner at the time. And it really opened my eyes to something that nobody ever likes to talk about, which is traffic and parking. Uh, and that was my initial entree into city government and city politics. So I went from traffic and parking, which really gives you an understanding on balancing the residents and businesses, because we need both. We need to have a thriving business community, and we need to make sure that when we have a business community that whether it's parking or traffic, it doesn't impact uh, the residents. So I did that for a while. Then I went um, into the Planning Commission, which really is the best training ground for government in our city. Because the Planning Commission really gets deep into understanding the planning, the future of our city. Whether it's a hotel that's being built, whether it's a business being built, whether it's apartment houses being built, that really gives you a true understanding of how a city gets built. And when the Planning Commission, uh, somebody came up to me and said, you know, Lily, you should run for office. And I said, that's, that's not me. That's not my personality. I like doing the work, but I'm not somebody. Like, I wasn't back when I was a Beverly class president. I wasn't that. I was somebody who loved community, but I never thought of myself as somebody who would put myself out there for elected office. It's scary. It's scary to put yourself out there and, and say, vote for me or don't vote for me. But somehow or other, um, I had the courage to do it. And, and I won. And not only did I win, I won every precinct and I came in first. And it really, I have to tell you, when, when that happened, even back then, I almost like didn't believe it. I was like, you know, how is this possible? Because I, I didn't even believe that that would even be possible. And my work ethic, it was for myself and for the community. It's like I needed to prove to myself that I was worthy of all those people who believed in me. And I needed to prove to them and to myself that I'm going to give it my all. And one thing that I have learned through this whole journey, because I've now been mayor three times, this is my third time, is you have to be true to who you are. And you know, when I was mayor the first time, I did something called Walk with the Mayor, where I literally, in orange, because of my, my Beverly color, would meet every Monday morning in front of City Hall and say, come and walk with me. Anybody and everybody is invited. Let's all connect. So, you know, when I first brought that up and said I wanted to do that, people told me I was crazy. They said, first of all, nobody's going to want to come. Why is anybody going to want to come? And usually, when uh, an elected official meets with somebody, they meet at City Hall, they meet in their office. And I said, that's not what I want. I don't want any barriers. I want anybody to be able to come and connect with me about anything. So I think what I realized for me in terms of leadership, in terms of political office, if you're true to who you are and your style, then you're going to succeed. If you th think that you need to be a certain way, look a certain way, dress a certain way to fit in that mold, then I, I'm convinced you won't be effective. So what I have done in this whole journey, and again, from where I was at Beverly, where I was not the first person to raise my hand, to where I am now, where I am so comfortable within who I am that I, I have to speak from my heart. I don't like having notes. I like to really connect with people. I want to hear from people. Last night, we had our 
uh, Live with Lily, it was my last one. Some of you were there, and it was for the teens. It was for all of you to share what's on your mind, for you to say, how can we make Beverly Hills better? And it was really extraordinary. I have to say, I think it was my favorite one ever. And uh, as was said earlier, uh, part of my initiative this year was a mental wellness initiative because I think the last number of years have been so challenging for all of us that we had to be separated. So I really felt that now that we are able to be back together again, even though we're able to be back together again, it doesn't mean that what we carry these last few years of being separated isn't still inside us. So I, I truly feel that to really shine a light on the fact that we still may be carrying something from that time. And I truly believe that everybody has something that's going on in their life. We don't know what it is, but everybody's carrying something and that's why we need to be kind to each other. And to see that we are more alike than we are different and to see each other in terms of humanity. So, you know, as, as Kobe was doing my introduction, I am somebody who just stands up to anything against taking away humanity and human rights. And, you know, whether it's been out front talking about what's happening in Iran or anti-Semitism or anybody who is involved with hate, I will be there because I feel that this is all of our journey that we are responsible to make sure that our world is humane and that we focus on humanity. So in terms of politics, it's hard because there are going to be people who like what you vote on and then the next minute you might do another vote and all of a sudden they don't like what you vote on. So. It goes back to being really true to who, you're, who you are, being able to know that every day when you look in the mirror, you, you've made your decision based on really listening and hearing what people are saying and taking it in, and then knowing within yourself that you made the right decision based on what you've heard from the community. And that, to me, I think is the most important thing, is that you do it with integrity, you do it with an open heart, you stand for something. That your, your word is your word. And that is something that, whether or not somebody agrees with me or doesn't agree with me, I think most people know that if I say something, that is my word. And my word is sacred. And I think if you do decide to go into politics, People will respect you if they know that you're not going to say one thing to one person, another thing to another person, that what you say is your word and that you stand for something. It takes courage, but I have to say, the more you do it, you build up that muscle within yourself and you have that, that strength to keep going and always try and surround yourself with people who are good, who share the same kind of values. and create a community to, to make a, a vision happen. It's not one person in anything we do in our city. It's not one person in leadership. It's about a community, always. So that's, that's my, my journey. I'm here to answer any questions. Nothing is off limits, so bring it on. Um, what okay, please you share your name. Oh, my name is Ariel. Hi, Ariel. Um, what made you want to become mayor? So the way it works in our city is you don't run for mayor. You uh, run for city council. City council. Yes. So, uh, and then in and, and some of our local cities are similar to that, just so you know, uh, like West Hollywood, Santa Monica, and such. Uh, so you run for city council. And then based on uh, the amount of votes you get, and you rotate into when you become mayor. So what made me want to run for city council? Yeah. And that is really my, my journey, is a, from my love of our community, it really is the fiber of who I am. And as I said, it all started here at the schools. And 
really beginning to get involved. I got involved. It was it was steps along the way. And I always say that when you look at life, you connect the dots going backwards. So for me, uh, when I look back at my love for the schools, and then I got involved with the schools as I became a parent as well, and then my love for the city, because when I loved the schools, I would enjoy the city. I would walk to my friend's house on different blocks, or I'd go to different restaurants on different streets. So I loved the city as well as I loved the schools. So I got involved initially with a commission uh, uh, you know, at the city. Then when I was involved with the schools, did things with the city. And it really was by getting more involved, being involved with different commissions, that I realized that I could really take all the knowledge that I had and really try to help make change. Because once you're on the city council, you can really shape the future. So I think it really was a journey. And for me, it started here. And in, when I first became mayor, uh, was during our city's 100th birthday, which was a great time to be mayor. And my initiative then was a healthy city. Like whenever you have a big birthday, you think about you know where you are in your life. And part of that was healthy people, healthy economy, healthy government. And as I said earlier, even with my walk with the mayor, which I initiated in 2014 when I was mayor the first time, we all wore orange. We all walked throughout the street in orange. And why was it orange? Because it was part of my Beverly pride. So it was a journey that made me do it. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, my name is Nur, and uh, do you have anything to uh, say to your younger self before running for office? What would you like? What advice would you give yourself before you know, running for these uh, positions? Yeah, that's a great, a great question, um, and and I often think about that. And when I when I step foot here at Beverly, and I remember myself sitting at these desks when I was taking classes here. I don't think back then that I knew myself the same way. I think I was more concerned about, you know, what what is it I'm supposed to be? What is it I, you know, the expectation of how you're supposed to be when you're in high school or in grade school. I think if I could talk to my younger self now, I would say just be comfortable in who you are. Just know that who you are is enough, and it's great, and just embrace who you are. And don't, don't think that uh, you need to be a certain way because other people are a certain way, or you want to fit in, or you don't. I think once you're really comfortable with who you are, um, I think that's when you can really, really shine, and I think that's probably true for all of us as we're growing up, kind of trying to find our way and try and we look at others or I mean, you know, we didn't have social media back when, when I was your age, but where everybody was looking, whether it was at magazines or TV or uh, other friends or to kind of determine the scale of who, where you're supposed to fit in. My younger self now, I would say, just be Lily. Just be who you are and be comfortable with that. And, and embrace that and love that. And I think um, then I would really feel that that would take me on the journey. I, I ended up getting there, but it, it took time. It's a great question. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sean. Hi, Sean. Uh, um, so what are like the right, the main challenges that you face as like a mayor or like as a politician? Yeah, you know, that's also a fantastic question. And, and a lot of it has to do with my personality. Uh, because for me, I literally put 240 hours in a 24-hour day. In that I, I mean, from day one, I give everybody my cell phone number. I am totally, totally accessible. So whether you want to call me on my cell or email or on social media or whatever. So I think for me, the, the hardest part is balance. I'm not good at that yet. Um, 
in that, uh, did I hear a chuckle somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> I think Mary knows that that's true. Uh, and I'm very fortunate that I have like a wonderful husband and, and grown sons who expect that of me. But I'd say the biggest challenge is not so much the work because I've learned along the way how to do it. The biggest challenge is having a work-life balance because of the way I do this job. Because I, when I do something, I, I give my all into it. And I literally start my day very early. I, and it doesn't stop. I mean, I'm on all these different group chats that if somebody at 3 in the morning is concerned because they heard a siren or they heard a noise or they think this, I will, I'll wake up at 3 in the morning and then immediately reach out to that resident. I'm on it and I'll call whoever and, you know, to find out if everything's okay. So I would say the biggest challenge is more of a personal challenge for me that I, I am more than all in. Uh, and I think the other part has always been um, when I would try new things, like many of the initiatives, probably almost all the initiatives that I've ever put forward, whenever I brought them up, people would say, bad idea, bad idea. Like even like my life with Lily that I did, when I first brought that up, people said to me, bad idea, because it's literally live. There's no like being a tape. So you're opening yourself up to anything. Anything can come your way. And so when I brought that up, people said, you know, at least tape it and you can edit it or whatever. And I said, nope, we're going to do it. We're going to do it live and, you know, I can handle it. And basically, as I start every live with Lily, I would say, bring anything on. We'll talk that no subject is off limits. My only ground rule I have is that we're kind to each other. And I have to tell you, in the entire year of doing Live with Lily, every month, everybody has been so respectful. So I think it's also being able to be comfortable with people telling you, no, it's not a good idea, and still doing it anyway. So that's what I would say. Hi. Hi, um, Sophia. Hi, Sophia. Um, I was curious, while Beverly Hills is obviously a very unique municipality, what appealed to you about the position of local government? in terms of your ability to make change? Uh, I, I think it really is because I feel that Beverly Hills is very, very unique. It's world famous. Everybody has heard of it. You go anywhere in the world and you mention that Beverly Hills and they know, they know about it from the movies. They know about it. But what I think is so unique about our city is that it is a small town feeling that people, like, people genuinely, at least to me, I feel, it feels like a family. It feels like a community that, like a small community, even though it's so world famous. So I think, for me, that's what has always appealed to me. Because people throughout the years always say, oh, Lily, you should run for this, you should run for that. And I always have said, not a chance. I have no interest in higher office. And you, because my passion has always been this community, and I think our community is unique. I think that the, uh, other cities, neighboring cities, don't have that sense of connection that we all have. And so that's why, because I think it wasn't so much, like I said, I wasn't the student that was like, you know, ASB president, class president, I wasn't that. But I was somebody who loved our, our community and felt that even in our schools it was a community. So I felt it was unique to this city. And that's why I chose to do it. It's a great question. Thank you. Anybody else? You. OK. <laughs> My Kobe. Um, could you tell us a little bit about like what goes into the city council meetings? Like What do you have to do beforehand to prepare? And talk about like what a day in the life of uh, being a mayor and going through those meetings and all that kind of stuff. Thank you. So we have city council meetings every other Tuesday. We have a study session meeting, and then we have a formal session meeting. So what the mayor gets to do, which is different than the entire council, the mayor gets to help set the agenda of what we're going to talk about. So I usually meet with our city manager and a few department heads a week or two before and plan out what are the items that we need to be discussing. 
in terms of time frame, in terms of priority. And then we set, we set the agenda. These are items that are study session items where we don't actually give, we don't vote on something, we just give direction. The evening meetings, which are the formal session, those are where we vote and, and we give direction. So that is something that literally every week I do, uh, where I plan out what are the items that we're going to be discussing. Uh, and then in terms of the day in the life of, of at least me as a mayor, it's a day and a night of the life of, of me because I, uh, you know, as I said earlier, I am on 24-hour call. And that, and that is just my personality. So uh, whether it's, you know, meetings that I have with different departments, like today, this afternoon, I'm meeting with somebody that we're going to be talking about uh, the outside parking facades yesterday had a meeting about uh, aiding those who are the unhoused. There's different different committee meetings that I have. So that happens pretty much all day long with different department heads. Uh, and then uh, at, at night, I'm there also for the residents if there's anything that's on their mind. So for me, it's something that is, I, I'm just 24 hours available for anything and everything that I can help solve. So uh, you said um, you work day and night, and I don't must sleep be, much. <laughs> yeah, and it must be very, you know, it must be very difficult. So where do you find the motivation to keep on, you know, doing your duties as a mayor? Thank you. Uh, and many people have asked that question. Actually, uh, somebody made a joke saying they're convinced there's two of me. But the other day they said that. Uh, and truly, the, the answer is, it's the people. I get my energy, like I get plugged in and energized by this community. That's where I get it. It's when I'm around, like today, when I'm around all of you, I feel energized. When I'm around the community members, and even those who are not happy at that moment because they don't like you know, how the council voted or they don't like how I voted. I still get the energy from the people, so I think that's my nature, where that is really what fuels me, is the people, the community, and really feeling that we as a community can help shape the future. I just love, love our city, and I love the people here. And I really feel that we together um, have shaped the past and can shape the future. So I, that's, that's where I'm getting my energy, definitely, and my passion. It's really important if you're going to go into politics or anything that you're passionate about it, that it's something that you wake up in the morning, even if you have a very full day, that you're excited to be a part of that. As a final thing, I just say you like... Keep, keep Bring it. I love right. questions. Well, um, I mean, it is definitely very difficult to be a mayor. And uh, my question was that, like, um, a politician often has to be a great compromiser between, you know, two interests, two interest groups or whatever. Uh, so how do you deal with that? How do you deal with the, you know, turmoil from both sides um, in a, you know, topic? It might be controversial or even not controversial. Um, how do you deal with that? And what advice would you give to young leaders who struggle with that? Yeah, I think really, and that's such a great question. Uh, to me, I think it's the, right, first of all, my motto at, at City Hall, everyone knows, is we start with yes, and then we figure out how. So that's always been my motto. I think people, if, if we approach one another with kindness, if we approach one another with knowing that we have the same goal, and the same goal is to make our, whatever, our city better, then where we have our differences on how we get there, that's where, that's the road. But I think people, if they feel that you're truly listening, there's a difference to me between hearing and listening. And if you're able to really make people feel that they're heard and that there's no judgment and that you're willing and open to shift 
I mean, I, there have been times where I, I, I think that I'm going to go a certain way, and then all of a sudden new, pe new information, new people come with a, a new way to approach things, and I thought, oh yeah, that makes sense. So I think it's about always having an open mind, an open heart, and people feel it. They know. They know when you're talking to somebody or when you're trying to solve something, if you're already in there, your mind is made up, forget it. You're not going to get anything done. And to me, that's not leadership. To me, leadership is not one person. It's about bringing everyone along together and finding a shared vision. And I think the way you do it, as I said, is to do it in a way that people feel that you're truly open to working together. And, and I think my experience is that people know that about me, that I don't come in with my mind made up, that I'm always willing to learn, to listen, to take in new information and work together. So, and you have to be strong in that within yourself to, to know that you're not like set in your ways, it's my way or the highway, because then you're not gonna get anything done. So open heart and definitely being open-minded and being willing to work together with people. I really think people can sense that with somebody, as opposed to somebody who clearly, they're looking at you, but you can tell they're not paying attention. They're not even hearing you. So it's definitely listening and hearing. Then I think you can get things done. And like I said, people have said no to me many times, and then we find a way to get, we get it done. But you've got to bring people along with you. Do you have any advice for us as teenagers on how to get more involved in the community? I know that you have an upcoming business with Bossy. Is there any other events that are coming up or any um, kind of ways for us to get more involved? Well, everything that we are doing in the city, we want you to be involved. Everything. Let me start with that. So everything. Uh, we just had, and, and you were there, we just had a festival, Beverly Hills, this past Sunday, which was incredible. We had some of your culinary students who provided, they, they actually went through the farmer's market, picked items from the farmer's market, and made platters. We had part of our entertainment was the students here. So. Anything and everything that we do in our city, any event that we have in our city, we also have a Team Beverly Hills program where students are included to be a part of it. But uh, working with our wonderful Mary Wells, uh, you know, on the school board, we have such a great relationship with our school district and our city that we want to continue to have more collaborations. So just know it is an open invitation. Uh, and yes, the, you know, there's a business with Bossy that I'm doing, but way beyond events. And that's what t uh, yesterday was about, was hearing your ideas of what we could be doing to make our, our city better. So uh, all I can say is we want to be connected with you because you are going to be our future. Just like I was sitting here as a student and then later I became where I am now, some of you might end up going down that road. So, uh, you know, we're, we have internships, we have all kinds of ways to get involved in the city if you want. And then there's always me, as I said, give everyone my cell phone number, however I can help in any way. But please, we have a great city and a great community. And I look to all of you to help shape it because you are going to take us to the future. Thank you. All right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I really appreciate you being here today. And I just want to say to everybody that um, one of the wonderful things about Beverly Hills is because of our small community and that everybody has a connection and that it be it because they went to high school here and they're working here and they've made this their home in in the bigger city of los angeles here we have this really wonderful community of beverly hills and you see it today where we have over 90 speakers that are here to speak about their careers and to open up themselves to you and make available 
internships or other connections that you may want to find out more about what they're doing or how they can be more involved in the city or with, it, with their business within the city to learn more about how we work. I think that that just really speaks volumes about what makes this community so special today and that we can have our mayor here today to speak to you and that she's willing to give you her cell phone and just a great example of giving back into the community. And I would just say for myself as a school board member, one thing that I would say is I didn't necessarily decide, oh, I'm gonna be in politics. I was involved in, in the schools, I'm involved in the community, and I was at a place in my life where, you know, with my parents, similar to what Lily's saying in terms of her younger self and growing up vision, and I love to bring people together. And, and in this city in particular, in our school district in particular, because of our size, because of the uniqueness of the connection, you're able to really get involved and actually make change. And I think that, you know, for me, that's what drives me, is that I can have a vision and I can work with people who love the city or love the school just as much as I do, and we can actually make a change. And there's nothing more gratifying or energizing than to be able to see the, the fruits of that and to really improve the quality of our schools or improve the quality of our life in the city. So I just, I encourage you all to get involved. There's so many different ways to be involved. Even this, I think it's on March 28th that Just In Case is having a big event at La Cienega Park which everybody in the families will be out there, and I encourage you all to From show up. From two to that. four. And that's just another event. There's, if you go on the city website, you can see all the events that are up and coming, and as well as with our schools. So, thank you, Mary. Thank you all for having me. Have a great rest of the day. I want you to know that you made my day. Thank you. So thank, you. thank you. Thank you again. And anybody who wants my cell phone number, Colby will give it to you.